Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. It's been four days since one of the biggest mass shootings in history. Most people still have more questions than answers about the gunman and particularly his motive. But if you've been watching any of the late night comedy shows or certain cable news outlets, you know those mysteries have been solved already. According to them, the real perpetrators are law-abiding gun owners and the organizations that represent them. Not an overstatement. Watch this. Do you feel like they're complicit, the GOP, the NRA, and the gun epidemic we're seeing in of America? Of course they are. Of course they are. Break from the NRA, which is making things worse, and work with us to get something done. Let's face it. The reason we don't have gun safety measures in the United States today is because of the NRA. Well, Chris Cox is the executive director of the NRA Institute for Legislative Action, and he joins us on the set tonight. How do you feel when you see that, Chris? You watch 58 people murdered in public, and then you see yourself personally blamed for those murders. Tucker, the American people are struggling. They're grieving. And so are the 5 million men and women of the National Rifle Association. The truth is that there are NRA members at that concert. There were NRA members shot at that concert, and NRA members murdered at that concert. So the American people are looking for answers, and so are we. So the NRA that was blamed for the shootings, was the shooter himself an NRA member? Have you checked? Of course not. And that's the one thing that's consistent, is they blame the one organization whose members don't commit the crimes. Huh. So you know that for certain? Yes. Okay. Um, then why are people blaming you? What's the agenda, do you think? Uh, well, you know, the agenda, Diane Feinstein said it herself when she said, if I had 51 votes, Mr. and Miss America, turn them all in, that's what she would do. And look, there, there are legitimate turn questions. Turn them all in, meaning turn, turn your guns turn your, in. Turn your guns in. Uh, and right now, the American people are looking for answers, but the American people are also looking for their Second Amendment. They're looking for Congress to respect the Second Amendment, and that's why we're calling on Congress to do something. Let ATF do their job, and Congress needs to do their job, allow good good, honest people, the ability to defend themselves, pass reforms like national right to carry reciprocity, and then have a broader conversation about what we can do to keep people safer. Because if we go down this road of gun control, we can look at it. You know, universal background checks. This guy passed background checks. Well, let's go the route of California, where they've banned semi-autos, banned magazines, pushed waiting periods. Has They have ammo registration. But that didn't stop a massacre in San Bernardino, and it didn't stop a massacre uh, in Santa Barbara. So they say, well, let's look a little bit further, you know, let's look at Europe and let's implement European style gun control. Well, you know what? That's what they did in Paris when someone came in with fully automatic machine guns and hand grenades and murdered people there. There's a consequence to this, Tucker, and the consequence is good, honest people are left defenseless. The National Rifle Association exists to make sure that doesn't happen in America. So, what is the solution? Well, the solution is to make sure that we address the underlying problems. This distraction of gun control does nothing to keep people safe. Gun control is a failed policy. We've tried it, and it's safe to say that it doesn't keep people safe. So do we need to have a broader conversation about activities that actually will? Do we have, need to have a broader conversation about Hollywood? You know, that NRA spends millions of dollars every year teaching safe and responsible gun ownership, and Hollywood makes billions promoting and glorifying gun violence. And then the same hypocrites come in and suggest that we're to blame for this. So there needs to be an honest conversation about solutions that work, and one of those solutions is to make sure the Second Amendment is supported, protected, and that law-abiding good people have the ability to use and carry a gun for self-defense. So I talked to a number of different people today who legitimately know a lot about guns. None of them lives here in Washington. And every one of them said the same thing about bump stocks, that they're ludicrous, that one of them said to me, I'd rather face someone with a bump stock than someone firing semi-automatically. They make rifles less accurate. Why then the focus on then, why then has, has NRA apparently said it would be willing to back banning them? Is that relevant to what we saw? Well, here's what the National Rifle Association said, and we need to look at the facts here. The Bar Barack Obama's administration approved the sale of bump stocks and these other devices. What we've said is ATF needs to do their job. ATF needs to look, and if there is technology that's come to the market that allow for a semi-automatic rifle to function as a fully automatic rifle, they need to be regulated differently. Now, we didn't talk about banning anything. We talked about ATF going back and reviewing whether or not these are in compliance with federal law, and if not, let's look at 
working together and figuring out a way to address this moving forward. At the same time, Congress needs to do their job and make sure that they're, they're going with meaningful solutions to these underlying problems, including respecting the Second Amendment, and we're going to be there making sure we protect the Second Amendment. So you all keep very close track of how guns are used in the country and compile statistics on them. Are you aware of other crimes where so-called bump stocks have been used? Well, no, we're not. And truthfully, we, there's not a whole lot of uh, people out there who own these things. But again, it gets away from the broader conversation. This conversation about gun control is intentional. Dianne Feinstein's desperate to move the conversation towards gun control and away from Congress's failure and the last administration's failure to keep people safe. Now is the time that the American people want answers. We want to be part of that. We want to be part of a constructive conversation. But part of that conversation has to be not only respecting the rights of law-abiding people, acknowledging that law-abiding people aren't the ones out there causing problems, and making sure that law-abiding people have the right to defend themselves. That's what the Second Amendment's all about, and that's what we're here for. So here's a sincere, totally sincere, and non-political question. We're about the same age. Shootings like this did not occur when we were kids. Same country. What has changed? What is this about? Why are we seeing these? Tucker, that's a conversation that's happening at dinner tables and in living rooms all over the country. I'm sure it's happened in yours. It's certainly happened in mine. And I don't know the answer. And I think we need to look at the broader conversation and have a broader conversation about a violent culture, about you know what's happened with, with gratuitous violence out of Hollywood, what's happened with prescription drugs. I don't know the answer to these things, but we certainly need to look at all of these areas while at the same time recognizing and being honest enough with one another that if we've tried something and it's failed, it's time to move on. We've banned semi-automatics in this country for 10 years. We banned high-capacity magazines. Bill Clinton's own Justice Department said it had no impact on crime. So let's be honest enough with one another and trust the American people to have an honest conversation. Let's work together, have Congress do their job. And on these side issues, you know, if ATF needs to look at something that functions as a fully automatic weapon, they're the ones who approved it. They need to look at it. That's not what the National Rifle Association's focused on. We're focused on keeping keeping Congress out of Second Amendment freedoms, keeping Congress focused on expanding the rights of law-abiding people to protect themselves and their families. That's what the American people want, and that's what the National Rifle Association wants. Chris Cox, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Tucker. Appreciate it.